This is just a quick video showing you how I'm soldering a uh, fuse wire to these 18650 cells to make a 72 volt by 40 amp hour battery pack for an electric motorcycle. Uh, so the first thing you want to think about is safety. You should probably be wearing a full face shield and because, you know, these are not recommended to solder on, they could possibly explode, but they probably won't. Anyways, you should probably wear a face mask just in case. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to go blind. You don't want to take a lithium explosion to the face. And the second thing is the fumes from soldering flux and whatnot are toxic. So I'm going to be running a fan right here next to my soldering station. Uh, so you'll hear that a little bit later. But anyways, uh, I'm doing this on the negative side of the cells, which I've found to be the more difficult side. Because the positive side has a tab uh, where it kind of lifts up off the cell so the heat gets uh, transferred to that tab a lot easier. It heats up a lot faster and the solder bonds a lot faster on the positive tab, at least on these Panasonic cells. On the negative cell, all the heat starts going into the battery as soon as you touch it, so you have to be very deliberate, do small solder uh, spots, you know. Uh, you should use probably a higher power soldering iron with a thicker tip to have more thermal mass. I'm just using a 50 watt Radio Shack soldering iron here. Uh, it's working for me for what I'm doing here. And so it helps to kind of scuff up the surface. I've got a sharp screwdriver here, a sharp flathead that I'm scuffing up the surface there. And I generally work in groups of four. That gives the iron time to heat up again in between doing each uh, bit of soldering. Because if it gets too cold, if like I was trying to do 16 in a row, and by the you know sixth or seventh cell, it started to get too cool from having transferred so much heat to the last cells that it wasn't making as good soldering connections. So I've had to split it up and just do two or four cells at a time. Uh, another thing that will really help is uh, some Rosen solder flux. You just kind of coat the scuff marks in that. And when you heat it up, it'll spread out, and that'll help the solder bond a lot quicker, a lot better, have a stronger bond. So I'm going to do that on these four cells. And I'm going to grab my nice hot soldering iron. <coughs> I've just got some basic, pretty thick electrical solder. I think it'd be better to use a thinner wire solder, thinner gauge. Uh, but this is all I got at the moment, so... Uh, I'll just have to work with it. So I kind of want to clean the tip a little bit, get any old solder off. And then I'm just going to put about a little dot on the tip. And right after I do that, I'm going to touch it to that fluxed scuffed surface. Count to about five Mississippi. And bring it up. And that looks like a good joint. I'll do the same thing for the next one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. That's another good one. Oh, sorry, let me turn the fan on. Sorry if it is too loud. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Alright, and now the last thing that I like to do is to test the strength of every solder joint. So I take that same sharp flathead and I try to pry the solder joint off. And any weak solder joint will just fall off in this test. So that tells me I need to re-solder, maybe use a little bit more heat, use more flux, you know. Um, so that just tells me that these are all good to go and I'll be able to solder wire into them and connect all these cells together and make a nice strong battery pack. Anyways, hope this helps you guys and I'll see you later.